Warning, the following video contains math. Sorry about that. Hey guys, this is Booligan with Airsoft Retreat, BooliganAirsoft.com, and in Airsoft Insider Magazine. Today, we're going to be taking a quick look at the Deep Fire AT4. This is a uh, launcher that I've already done a video on, however, this video is going to be covering a modification that I did to increase the effectiveness, effective range, and general usability of this thing. Word of warning, this video will contain math, and I'm sorry about that, but it'll help display and help demonstrate what I'm getting at with this modification. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at a couple of things first. All right, first things first, we need to look at the power plant that operates the Deep Fire AT4. It is a 40 millimeter shell powered launcher, which means this is your power source. For those that do not know, a 40 millimeter shell in Airsoft is basically a gas reservoir and release system. Um, the shells are made out of usually metal, sometimes they're made out of high strength polymer, and they hold a pressurized or a liquid excuse me that exerts pressure when released in my case I am using propane you can use green gas some use co2 um, they're filled from the top or the bottom and they are actuated with a small little button here on the back push the button it expels all of the gas the thing about this is it holds a very small amount of propellant um, the, the gas reservoir in this, and this is a high-powered shell. This is the uh, Madbull XM108 high-powered shell. Uh, it's loud, normally would hold 108 rounds. I don't fire BBs out of it. A launcher, obviously, we're using a foam round. Um, but your gas reservoir is not very big. It's you know, barely about you know, that tall and pretty narrow. So you don't have a huge amount of potential energy in this because you don't have a huge amount of propellant. Because of that, 40 millimeter shells are very useful for short barrel or short or small diameter launchers. Something like a M203 works really well because it has a very small barrel. The barrel volume isn't very large, but it's got a long enough barrel that whatever you're shooting can get up to speed. The problem with the Deep Fire AT4, as we'll take a look in just a second, it combines a long barrel over two feet long with a large diameter, 57 millimeters or about two and a quarter inches. Uh, because of that, you have a lot of barrel volume that you have to fill and sometimes these shells just aren't up to it. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the barrel assembly and you know, unfortunately there will be math ahead. So stay tuned. Okay, this is the inner barrel assembly of the Deep Fire AT4. You've got metal barrel, and it's very nice machined aluminum base cap, which allows for breech loading of your 40 millimeter shell. Here's the thing, if you can't tell, this thing's really big. Uh, discounting the about an inch or so of this assembly that sits inside the barrel, you have a 30 inch long barrel with two and a quarter inch inner diameter, or 57 millimeters. Um, this gives you a barrel volume of 100, over 119 cubic inches. That is a huge, huge amount of barrel space to be powered by this little shell, especially when you're shooting a foam round. The foam round that I use with this thing with the standard barrel is this. It's a 60 millimeter Milsim Labs uh, foam round. It's a model that's supposed to be a drop-in mortar. Um, how this thing works, it would fit. You know, you, you usually wouldn't be able to put it all the way down. You have to put it about in the middle just because of that incredible amount of barrel volume. And you'd be able to shoot it about 200 feet with about, you know, call it 30 degrees of uh, angle. And you'd be able to get in a 15 to 20 foot area that you're shooting at. So it's, it's pretty decent area accuracy. The problem is I wanted something that shot a little bit further and would be able to use a much more accessible and easier to carry around. So what we did, after talking to the owner of Milsim Labs, um, we came up with an idea of let's create a drop-in inner barrel for this thing that converts it from that two and a quarter inch or 57 millimeter inner bore to a one and a half inch or 38 millimeter inner bore. Here's where the math comes in. So as I said before, your inner bore with this thing, your, your, your barrel volume was about 119 cubic inches. With the new barrel, which is both slightly shorter in length and smaller in diameter, you only have 44.2 cubic inches of barrel volume. 
that's a decrease of almost 63%, 63.95 if you want to be technical. That is a huge, huge decrease in barrel volume. That means that your single gas powered shell is working much more efficiently at propelling the round that you're using. The round that I'm using for this is this little guy. It's a 40 millimeter M29 round. It was designed um, and initially printed on a 3D printer and then they use that to create foam rounds um, through Milson Labs. They're inexpensive. You can get them in, in packs of uh, like maybe three or six and frankly they fly really really well. Uh, using this with an M203 launcher, I'm able to get over 100 foot range, and that's great out of a short barrel, you know, 40 millimeter launcher. With this, we'll have a little bit higher performance, and I'll explain that in just a second. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at some pictures of the adapter that I made, and then I'll go over the details of what parts you need to convert this yourself. So what you just saw was a PVC inner adapter barrel system that uh, I came up with for this launcher. Um, what you need is a 25 inch long piece of 1.5 inch inner diameter schedule 40 PVC pipe. Um, you can get this at any hardware store. It's super, super common. The only thing you're gonna wanna make sure is that it is one and a half inch inner diameter, um, not outer diameter because that won't work with the adapters that I used. Um, the pieces you saw in the end caps were basically couplers. They were just one and a half inch PVC pipe couplers designed to put two pieces of PVC pipe together. They just so happened to have an outer diameter of like 56.85. I mean, it was super, super close, you know, as far as millimeters go, super close to the inner bore of the factory barrel. And it worked really, really well. There was a small plastic nub that I had to grind off. And then as you saw in the pictures, I put a single layer of Gorilla Tape, which is a little bit thicker than electrical tape. You can use electrical tape, duct tape, whatever you want, um, just to seal it up and fit it a little snugly in the barrel. And I just needed a single wrap. I couldn't even overlap it. It was that close in size. It slid right into the barrel and it decreased my barrel length to 25 inches of usable barrel length. And the inner bore shrunk down to 1.5 and it works fantastically. Some of the performance figures that I'm getting out of this thing now, as I mentioned before, with the 60 millimeter Milsim Labs round, I was getting about 200 foot area accuracy with about 30 degrees or so of elevation with firing. Using this little guy, I am now getting 225 foot tested vehicle size accuracy with barely 10 degrees of elevation. When I decided to ramp it up to about 30 degrees to see what would happen, the round fired about 350 feet into the next neighborhood, never to be seen again. So the power is certainly there. I just have to work on my accuracy and have to basically relearn how to shoot this thing. But this is a great, great way to get more usable range, better accuracy, and more potential range, just because of you're, you're shooting a much smaller projectile the foam 60 millimeter round weighs about three times as much as this little M29 foam round. Um, so it's safer, it'll go a little bit faster, but it flies farther. Honestly, this thing is the way to go with the deep fire AT4. The best part is the cost. This conversion kit, if you want to call it, that I put together costs about $4.50 worth of PVC pipe and couplers. That's it and it can be done in 10 minutes in an afternoon and it's totally reversible. So say you want to go back to the big bore, you can do that, just pop the old one out and you're good to go. Um, in short, and I know this was kind of a long video and there was math and it was boring and we'll do just a quick fire test to show you. Um, honestly, if you have a deep fire AT bore, just do it. Just do the conversion. Um, it's gonna use your gas shells much more efficiently um, you're going to get much better performance out of that shell and these things are much easier to carry and they fly very, very well. Um, so thanks for watching. Let's go ahead and um, take a look at this thing launching. Uh, we'll do some short range testing at around uh, um, 90 feet and then we'll do a long range lobbing test out to you know, 200 plus feet and see what we get. Um, let's go out to the range. All right, out at the range. 
and also known as my backyard. Uh, for this testing, we're going to be using the XM108 high powered round, the M29 foam round, and we're just going to be using the uh, inner barrel assembly from the AT4 just because um, it's a little bit easier to reload for testing like this. And frankly, I'm not wielding a giant rock launcher in my backyard. So let's go ahead and uh, do a quick test firing. Okay. One of the nice things about this conversion is that you can breech load your foam rounds. A little snug, fit right there in the back. Put your shell in, you're good to go. You don't have to pull the entire uh, assembly out just to launch it. This test is going to be, we'll be shooting at the swing set, which is at this distance, approximately 80 feet away. All right, let's go ahead and do the test. Three, two, one. Yeah, as you can see, I uh, aimed a little bit too high and put that one entirely into the neighbor's backyard. That happens sometimes. All right, this shot's gonna be kind of hard. We're gonna be launching it over the fence, over the cars, and to the uh, neighbor's house across the cul-de-sac, which distance from here to the garage door is 225 feet. Kind of hard to tell from that camera angle. Um, my camera doesn't capture very long ranges very well, but uh, both rounds went right to the driveway, um, which is right where I was aiming at, like I said, about 220, 225 feet. Um, that was aiming without any sights, basically just holding the tube up at waist level, about 10 degrees of elevation. Um, with some actual aiming, this thing can really, really have a lot of firing potential. So, like I said, $5, easy conversion. It's worth a try if you have a deep fire AT4. You get a lot better uh, range, a lot better performance, and get to use these nice little guys. So, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all the reviews on Blue Lagoon Airsoft, airsoftretreat.com, and make sure to uh, check newsstands for the first issue of Airsoft Insider Magazine, July 9th. Thanks for watching.